Hey there, you looking kind of cute. Have you considered subscribing? Let's have some fun. She ushered us both to the master bedroom. You need some accents, she said rummaging through her jewelry. There they are. She handed something to Kinga and another something to me. What's this? I wondered. Earrings, Kinga replied. They are not rings, I didn't agree. It's their name earring and they can be any form really, Aunt Margaret explained. I didn't know what to do with them and was staring at Kinga. She looked at me and sighed. Aunt clipped those on Kinga's ears. I tried to do the same but was doing something wrong. Let me help you, Aunt Margaret offered and clipped those things on the lobes of my ears. It hurts, I complained. It will go, my aunt said. Have we finished yet? Kinga asked. Just one thing left, the aunt said. She took something that looked like a pencil but most probably wasn't. She aimed that thing at Kinga's eye. Kinga flinched back. Eh no, she shouted. It's just an eyeliner, aunt explained. You are about to poke my eye, Kinga whined. Not poke but draw a line around your eye, the aunt said. Why? For you to be pretty. I'm pretty enough for my liking. I didn't agree to be girly. That was Sylvie. Paint her, Kinga snapped. As you wish, the aunt said turning to me. I was trapped. I didn't remember I promised to be girly. I agreed to pretend to be one. Close your eyes, aunt ordered. I felt her touching my eyes with something sharp. Eyeliner, check. Aunt murmured. She took the fancy looking bottle and spritzed it on my wrists and neck. You are ready, she exclaimed and stepped back to have a full view. Not yet. Aunt started to rummage through her jewelry again and handed me a bunch of shiny hoops. What's this? Bracelets, Kinga said. They will fall off, I said. Aunt Margaret just squeezed three over my left palm and another four over my right one. The result was dangling with my every move. But they didn't fall off. See, Aunt rather stated. I thought you were more tomboy than me, Kinga mused. You framed me, I retorted. And I am the boy. Look at yourself, Kinga said. The rest of the day was okay. Uncle Paul was looking funny at me. I thought I looked like a boy in a skirt. He said I was prettier than Kinga. The food was better than anything I'd eaten before. My mother wasn't good in the kitchen. I was experimenting with food but usually, the result wasn't very tasty. Then there was a line dance contest. A man was playing banjo and the lady was showing the steps and everyone had followed her steps. In the beginning, the crowd was big with those who didn't follow the steps falling out. After a few dances, there were only two of us left, Aunt Margaret and me. We got badges and were photographed for the local paper. After the restaurant, we went to the amphitheater to watch the fireworks. Kinga was a loner at school, the same as I was. There were no kids of our age in the neighborhood, so we were spending time at home. I was reading The Grapes of Wrath while Kinga was reading Little Women. About an hour every day, I spent practicing the flute while Kinga practiced gymnastics. Like stretches, jumps, and tumbles. When I was done with the flute, we were jumping and tumbling together. While reading our books we usually sunbathed in the backyard. Kinga was in a bikini and I was in bikini bottoms. Then one day a neighbor complained about a topless girl prancing in our backyard. I wasn't prancing. There were two options, to put a bikini top on and have tan lines or put a tee on and remain white. Aunt Margaret said there was a tanning cream and I opted for a bikini top and tan lines. That couldn't be much of tanning. I planned to leave for Alaska next week. Dad called and said they had our things in storage and both were undertaking a voyage to the mountains. I had to stay in Waterloo till the start of the school year. Great. Shit. Six weeks were left before the start of the school year. I'd finished my Steinbeck book and didn't know what else to read. The books that were on Kinga's list I had read a year before. Practicing flute and tumbling with Kinga were the only things I had to do. Boredom. I started to experiment in the kitchen like I did at home in Boston. Here I had Aunt Margaret to help me. Or rather, I was helping her. Kinga was too much of a tomboy to be engaged in the kitchen business. Or any other domestic chore, like dusting, cleaning, vacuuming, and laundry as those were exclusively Aunt Margaret's duty. But she was working in the hospital and sometimes overtime. When Aunt Margaret was late from work, Jake or Uncle Paul ordered pizza. While Kinga and I were like helpless babies incapable of making dinner. Or laundry. 
or clean the house. We were dying of boredom rather than doing something useful. I didn't force Kinga to do something. I started it alone, but she sighed loudly and joined me, complaining that I was more girl than she. But it wasn't a girl thing I guessed. The summer was nearing the end and I was getting ready to leave and meet the polar bears. Mom called. Mom and dad moved into our new house and it was okay, but there was a problem. The school. There was no high school in Kotzebue. Only elementary and junior high up to 8th grade. We can send you to boarding school in Anchorage or you may stay with Uncle Paul and Aunt Margaret. If they agree to keep you, Mom said. I passed the phone to Aunt Margaret. They talked for another half an hour and I didn't understand what it was about. Because I heard only one side of the conversation. You stay with us, Aunt Margaret announced after she disconnected. Your mom will make the needed documents and send them to me to be your guardian. So I could take you to the dock and school. The school will start soon, I said, do we have time for documents to come? You're right, Aunt agreed, we'll go tomorrow and see. The next day in the school office. Aunt Margaret started to explain about my parents in Kotzebue and no high school there. And two mad scientists in the family. And the kid left here in Waterloo for summer. And her other kids are already in this school. And. Aunt's phone rang. Sorry, she said and answered. Yes. Yes. No. What? Coming. I'm leaving. There was a great car crash and all surgeons are needed. This is Sylvie. She introduced me and left. The pregnant pause followed. I didn't know what to say and if at all I had to say something. Then the teacher entered the office. I knew her. It was Mrs. Seder. The same who arranged for Kinga and me to carry the school banner. After the mandatory high she turned to me and looked me up and down. I know you, she exclaimed. You have won a line dance contest I guess. Or wasn't that you? It was me but I won together with my aunt. Sylvie boy. Right? She asked. Yes, m I confirmed. Boy, the secretary wondered. She claims she's a boy, Mrs. Sado explained. We are the most LGBT friendly school in the entire state, the VP stated. But we need a doctor's confirmation about your transition. Are you transitioning, right? Huh? What? No. But. I wasn't. Transition into what? No, I wasn't. Definitely. Thank goodness. Mrs. Sada sighed. I take you on the dance squad without tryouts. I can't. I play the sea flute and I want to be in the school band, I complained. Ms. Reed has already won flute too many as far as I know, VP said. I don't know how to dance. Says the girl, the winner of the line dance contest, chuckled Mrs. Sada. It dawned on me that I was a girl in their eyes. But I wasn't. Why wasn't my aunt here when I needed her the most? I was a girl all summer because my aunt asked me to be. Because it was less complicated, because few people thought I was a girl. At the end of the summer all Jake's friends, all our neighbors, and a lot of other people I didn't know were sure I was a girl. And now I was starting school as a girl. Just wonderful. Crap. Well. I decided to go with the flow. I didn't need to dress girly or anything. I'd do everything like Kinga did. She was a tomboy, wore no makeup, and preferred jeans and shorts. Shit. It didn't work. I was in the dance squad and she wasn't. Instead, she was on the gymnastics team. I want to be there too but I was already assigned to the dance squad. A dance squad is something like cheerleaders but with more dancing and less jumping. Everything else was the same. Uniform in maroon with white trimming. Tight long sleeve tee and short pleated skirt with panties showing. Wearing squad uniforms to school was mandatory every game day. Other days dancers were expected to look their best. Like with a little makeup, shaved legs, and armpits. And to wear something fashionable, preferably a skirt. Oh crap. The only positive thing in that school was gender-neutral bathrooms for confused students. Like me. Confused, ha. Huh? I wasn't. I was mistaken. Kinga wasn't any help. She dressed tomboyish and girly at the same time. I had to find my style or I would end up in skirts on an everyday basis. I adopted the army style. Olive green and camo pattern. Tees, tactic pants, boots, beret, dog tag, steel bracelets, makeup shades black and olive. 
I looked classy. People said so. Aunt Margaret said so. Jake said I was hot. He called me Army Chiquilla. His buddies called me the same. Anyway, I thought I wasn't too girly. Kinga met some new friends, Tracy, Elle, and Pat. They were always socializing after school at home, or Elle's place, or in the mall. They talked about fashion, boys, music, boys, school, and boys. I had no fashion or music sense so I could talk only about school. The school theme was enough for me at school. I didn't spend too much time with them as a result. No dating before you are 16, Aunt Margaret insisted. Despite my army appearance, I didn't look masculine enough for any girl to go on a date with me. The no dating policy was addressed to Kinga I guessed. She talked about boys, not I. Aunt Margaret wasn't the only mom declaring a no dates policy under 16. Only juniors and seniors were dating. We met Jake with his fourth girlfriend in the mall. Kinga and I were raiding the mall for Christmas presents right after Halloween. We noticed them in the food court sharing one seat. She was sitting on his knees. The mall was crowded, so I guess that was why. Kinga and I were measuring new Jake's trophy when there was a hem. Behind us. We turned around and there was a man in a suit with a tag that was like an ID. Not a name tag like most salespersons had. On the tag, there were a lot of words in the fine print. Hi here. I'm Anthony Spencer, the HR manager of this mall. You both look very alike, sisters probably. It's exactly what we need for this season. Would you be interested in becoming Santa's helpers? From 4 to 8 on weekdays and whole days on weekends. You ha. I said. Oh, yes. Kinga said. Okay then. Let's go to my office. I'll give you contracts for you and your parents to sign. The contract was several sheets full of text in weird lawish language. I never was good at reading and understanding instructions. I preferred when someone told me what to do. We took those contracts home. Aunt Margaret glanced them over and signed. Work at the mall can't be an excuse from doing your homework, she said. Then she warned, don't spend hard-earned money on silly things. She didn't say what those silly things are though. I didn't plan to spend it at all. I lived at my aunt's home and I wasn't her kid. Someone had to pay for me. My parents only sent money if someone reminded them over and over again. I couldn't live on charity. I planned to give my earnings to my aunt. The next day after school we went directly to the mall with contracts. Mr. Spencer gave each of us a big plastic bag with our costume and showed us to the employee's locker room to change. We got lockers to keep our things. He said we were responsible to keep our costumes clean and tidy. The outfit was elfish green with some white accents. It was much better than those worn by the Santa's helpers I'd seen in Boston. Those were green red white black striped rags. Our outfits were green tights, green leotard, green cap, green coat, and green skirt, all with white fur trimming. And white boots on one inch heels. The overall look was okay except for the skirt. The skirt was of some heavy material and it was kind of full circle and standing out like a tutu raising the coat's hem. It made the leotard bottom look like panties. Gross. May we be without skirts? I asked. Without skirts? Undressed? Mr. Spencer wondered. Not undressed, no. The coat without the skirt covers more than with it, I said removing the skirt and twirling in front of him. You may add Santa's belt, only white, to tie over the coat. Sounds good and looks good even without a belt. But. HMM he hesitated. The costume was approved by the marketing department. Come with me. We followed him to the marketing department and found that the outfit was soft and comfortable, not restricting our movements. The boots were easy to walk on despite the heel. We entered a big room with desks and computers and only one middle-aged woman. Mr. Spencer explained to her the problem with the skirt and what I proposed. I'm okay, the woman said. I guess Sandra's boutique has white plastic Santa belts. Something else. We were sent to Sandra's boutique where we got belts and started the first day as elves. Being on the side of Santa and managing kids in the line was the easiest part. Usually, we were like more guides showing where what was located. We were not regular staff so we had to take mom's kids by the hand and lead them to the desired store. And then come back to Santa's place. Parents dumped their kids into the playroom before their main shopping. It was our territory too. 
For hours later we were exhausted. For hours. I thought about the weekend with horror. We got used to heels and to constant walking around with kids. It wasn't as bad as it seemed the first few days, but it wasn't easy either. Practice after school and before the mall, and homework after we got home when it was dark already. But the money was good. Our last day was Christmas Eve. We finished at five and Mr. Spencer took us home in his car still wearing our costumes. He said we could attend evening service in our outfits for more kids' amusement. We politely omitted the fact we didn't attend any church. After we got out of his car there was another car that belonged neither to my uncle nor to my aunt. It couldn't be Jake's because it was almost new and had to cost a fortune. We entered the house and found my parents together with Uncle Paul and Aunt Margaret in the living room. In half a year mom had called only twice to say our new home wasn't ready and the next time I had to stay in Waterloo. And then not a single call as I knew. I felt dumped and abandoned. We stood there in silence. Oh, dad said at last. He took Kinga and held her at arm's length, look at you, who could guess you'll grow to be almost as beautiful as Kinga. I'm Kinga, Kinga whispered, and she is Sylvie. I half expected my rents would make a scene and I could revert to the normalcy of being a boy. Instead, they were okay with me being a girl. I was doomed.